Hello everyone, now let us discuss about hot melt extrusion method, HME. Now, hot melt extrusion, which is nothing but HME, is a promising technology for the production of new chemical entities in the developmental pipeline and for improving the products that are already on the market. The application of HME expanded to the pharmaceutical industry at the beginning of 1970s and was used in formulation and product development as well as manufacturing. The first application of HME as a manufacturing tool in the pharmaceutical industry was investigated by L. E. K. et al. using poly vinyl acetyl co methacrylic acid and epoxy resin containing a secondary amine as a polymeric carrier. HME is a continuous pharmaceutical process that involves pumping polymeric materials with a rotating screw at temperatures above their glass transition temperature, Tg, and sometimes above the melting temperature, Tm, to achieve molecular level mixing of the active compounds and thermoplastic binders, polymers, or both. This molecular mixing converts the components into amorphous product with a uniform shape and density thereby increasing the dissolution profile of poorly water-soluble drugs. Coming to equipments and process, the extrusion is a process of changing the physical properties of the substance by forcing it through an orifice or dye under controlled conditions. The extrusion equipment is classified into three main categories, RAM, radical screen and roll and screw extruders. Among these, the screw extruders are the most important in the pharmaceutical industry because they continuously convert the feed material to the finished form such as rod, tube or film etc. And the rotating screws, they force the feed material forward towards the die and the material is softened by the frictional heat developed through the barrel wall. And the feed reaches the end of the screw in a vicious state that can be forced through an orifice or die and molded into a desired shape. Now coming to types of screw extruders. Pharmaceutical screw extruders are designed based on the desired extrudate and are required to meet the current regulatory standards for the manufacture of dosage forms. They are classified as follows. Single screw extruders, SSEs, smooth or grooved barrel. The next is Twin screw extruders, TSEs, rot co-rotating or counter-rotating with intermeshing or non-intermeshing screws. The next is multiple screw extruders, MSEs, static or rotating central shaft. They are composed of static or rotating central shaft. Now coming to single screw extruders. SSEs are the most widely used extruders because they are mechanically simple devices that have slight modification to their operational principles since their invention around 1897. The SSEs consist of one continuously rotating screw in a barrel that result in good quality molten material or melt and generates a high stable pressure for a consistent output. In general, the screw design may consist of 20 or more turns with a pitch similar to the screw diameter, therefore creating a long slender machine in which substantial longitudinal temperature gradient can be maintained and controlled. The screw design may consist of 20 or more turns with a pitch. With, by that, a substantial longitudinal temperature gradient can be maintained and controlled. It also provides considerable residence time, thereby permitting an adequate degree of end-to-end -end mixing. Now here you can see the cross-section of single and twin screw extruders. Here you can see this is a single screw extruder. And this is a twin screw extruder. Here two screws are there. They can either co-rotate co or counter-rotate. Some more important points regarding the single screw extruders are 
different operations can be performed in SSEs such as feeding of raw materials, conveying, melting, devolatization, pumping and shaping. Devolatizing, pumping and shaping. Mixing can also be accomplished for less demanding application. The SSE receives the raw material in the feeding area and then conveys it along a flighted screw enclosed in a barrel. And the SSE is floor fed via the feed hopper and the screw RPM determines the output rate. Screw rotations per minute determines the output rate. However, they may occasionally be stave fed where the feed system sets the mass flow rate and is independent of the screw RPM. And the flights of the screw and the inner surface of the barrel form a flow channel due to the rotation of the screw. Now, as a function of the frictional forces in the flow channel, the SSE propels the raw materials towards the proximal portion of the screw. And the heated barrel surface and the mechanical energy input supplied by the screws induce the material to form a melt pool which is inversely proportional to the solid bed size and therefore the melt pool increases as the solid bed decreases. And finally, the molten extrudate is pumped through a die that imparts a definite shape for further downstreaming process. These essential features combined with low maintenance and low cost make the hot melt extrusion the equipment of choice for the production of almost all extruded products. Now coming to twin screw extruders, TSEs. The TSE as the name indicates has two agitator assemblies mounted on parallel shafts and the use of two screws permits different types of configurations and also imposes different conditions in all the zones of the extruder from the feeding of the material via the hopper to the rotating screw and finally to conveying the material to the metered pumping zone. Therefore, different types of twin screw extruders are available in which each have a distinct operating mechanism and processing applications. And the screws in the TSEs can either be co-rotating co-rotating that is same direction or be counter-rotating that is they rotate in the opposite direction. The two types of TSEs can further classify as functionally fully intermeshing or non-intermeshing. Meshing. Fully intermeshing or non-intermeshing. The fully intermeshing TSE is the most popular because the design incorporates a self cleaning feature and therefore not only reduces the non-motion but also prevents the localized overheating of the raw material with the extrudate. Therefore, the raw material does not rotate along the screw or adhere to the first-in, first-out principle of the extrudate. In comparison to the fully intermeshing TSE, the non-intermeshing is less popular in the mixing application due to its weak screw interactions and low self-cleaning capacity. The two types of screws are often used to produce the two types of screws are often used to process highly vicious materials and for the removal of large amounts of volatile substances. The non-intermeshing TSEs are not susceptible to high torque generation while processing highly vicious material because these screws are positioned separately from each other. So non-intermeshing TSEs are not susceptible to high torque generation. Now here you can see the classical intermeshing, co-rotating and counter-rotating screws. Rotational intermesh tracking plus power through two shafts can be seen here. This is a classical counter-rotating screw. They rotate in opposite direction and this is the example for classic co-rotation. This is example for classic counter rotation and this is the example for classic co-rotation. Now, the twin screw extruders, TSEs are characterized by following descriptive features. The first one is reduced 
residence time. The residence time of a typical extrusion process ranges from 5 to 10 minutes based upon the screw speed and feed rate. The TSEs will have reduced residence time. Next is self-cleaning screw features. The flight of one of the intermeshing screws cleans the root of the adjacent screw, thereby ensures complete emptying of equipment and reduces the product product waste at the end of the production batch. The next point is minimum supply. Combining the continuous operation of the equipment with continuous feeding of the material reduces the work supply of the formulation batch. The next added advantage is flexibility. The operating parameters can be altered easily and continuously to change the extrusion rate or mixing function. The segmented screw elements permit the easy optimization of the agitator design to work within the process applications and the die plates can also be easily exchanged to alter the extrudate diameter which enables the processing of a wide variety of formulations on a single machine. You can also change the die plates which enables the processing of wide variety of formulations on a single machine. The next added advantage is enhanced mixing. Advantage of TSCs is enhanced mixing. These screws are designed in such a way that it provides two types of mixings. Mixing. The first in distributive mixing, the materials are evenly blended with minimum degradation and therefore it is mainly used to heat and shear sensitive APIs. The second time called dispersive mixing. The first one is distributive mixing. The second is dispersive mixing. It involves breaking down the droplets or solid domain to find morphologies using energies at or slightly higher than the threshold level needed. And this mixing facilitates the efficient compounding of two or more APIs in the twin screw extruder. Now here is the list of some commercially available pharmaceutical grade extruders. The company is Thermo Scientific. The next extruder name is Pharma Mini HME Micro Compounder, capacity is 0.01 to 0.2 kg per hour, screw <coughs> diameter is variable and the screw assembly is co or counter rotating, both are available. And one more example for the company Gabler is DE40, DE100, DE120. DE40 the capacity is 5 to 100 kg per hour, screw diameter is 40. And it is a co-rotating, screw assembly is co-rotating, whereas DE100 is capacity is 80 to 800 kgs per hour, the screw diameter is 100 mm, hence the name DE100. It is also co-rotating. Next DE120, the screw diameter is 120, it is also co-rotating. So these are some of the companies and the commercially available extruder names with their capacity, screw diameter and screw assembly. Now coming to multi-screw extruders, MSCs. The extruder that incorporates more than two screws are generally referred to as MSCs. The extruders that incorporate more than two screws are generally referred to as MSCs. Depending upon the number of screws used in the extruder, the assembly may vary. For example, if the extruder has 6 or 8 screws, they can they are organized in a circumferential manner. On the other hand, if the extruder has 3 or 5 screws, then, the set, then they are set up in a linear fashion. In the case of 4 screws, the extruder has a control screw and 3 spurs. These arrangements of screws in the MSC are in no unique sense and may vary depending upon the requirement of the food and pharmaceutical industries. The multi-screw extruders are preferred over single screw extruders as a highly shear dominated flow of the melted material in SSC results in large amount of heat generation which thermally degrades the material. That is thermally liable material can be degraded. However, multi-screw extruders due to positive displacement flow in the intermeshing region between the screws, prevention of degradation of thermal liable materials is attained. Hence, it is suitable for materials which are 
heat liability is present. Here you can see the schematic representation of a typical excluder system. This is blue color indicates matrix and red color indicates API. This is the feeder, feed rate output and feed rate input. Here the motor governs the screw speed. This motor governs output rate and input rate of the feed. And these are the barrel temperatures output. And here you can see the spectrum, material pressure and die. This is the barrel temperatures input. And this one is the screw speed output. The material enters into the extruder through the feeder. Here it is processed and it comes out of the die in a desired shape. Now coming to the materials used in HME. The use of HME in pharmaceutical application requires the inclusion of number of functional excipients and a complex mixture of active ingredient in the formulation which should possess the following characteristics. They must meet the same levels of purity and safety as those used in traditional dosage forms. They must be able to deform easily inside the excruder and solidify on existing it, exiting it. They must deform easily inside the excruder and they must solidify once they are exiting it. They must be thermostable and maintain an acceptable physical and chemical stability during the HME process and afterward during the long term storage. The thermal stability of the individual compound is a prerequisite for the process. Although the short processing time used in the HME process does not limit the use of all thermoliable compounds. The desired in vitro release and in vivo performance should be achieved by the final dosage form. And these functional excipients can be broadly classified as matrix carriers, release modifying agents, fillers, thermal lubricants, stabilizing agents, plasticizers, antioxidants and miscellaneous additives. The selection and the use of various excipients can impart specific properties to the hot melt extruded, extruded pharmaceuticals in a manner similar to those obtained with traditional dosage forms. Each excipient will impart a specific property to the end product. Now coming to the pharmaceutical applications of hot melt extrusion process. It is employed in solid dispersions for solubility or bioavailability enhancement, micro encapsulation, targeted drug delivery systems, taste masking, in the production of films, implants, sustained release preparations, nanotechnology, floating drug delivery systems. Here you can see the schematic representation of continuous preparation of solid lipid nanoparticles, SLNs, solid lipid nanoparticles using hot melt extrusion connected to a high pressure homogenizer. Here this is the high pressure homogenizer and this is the hot melt extrusion equipment. Here feeding the lipid, injecting the surfactant solution and this is the water bath and this is the connector, insulated connector. Here mixing takes place and homogeneous discharge will be released into this and this is a high pressure homogenizer by which the solid lipid nanoparticles are prepared. Solid lipid nanoparticles are prepared using hot melt extrusion connected to a high pressure homogenizer. This is one of the application. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for further videos on pharmaceutical sciences and other related disciplines.